The villain wants to live Chapter 246, Loss, 1. After two hours of private lessons, the room appeared to be empty. Tick-tock, tick-tock it was a shattered space. There, Sylvia was looking over the homework that de Killian had left, a revision of the magic circuit, a vocabulary list of fairy words with homonyms, and several math problems that he said would help. She looked at it all silently and muttered softly. I'm not afraid, the current Dekillian was fake anyway, everything would be fake. Until she painted the real one, all of them were processes, not results, of this trial and error. So, she didn't have to be afraid if he disappeared, she didn't have to be afraid of parting. Tweet, all of a sudden, her familiar came chirping up to her shoulder, the let out a whine and climbed onto her lap. Yeah, Sylvia spoke to the two who were worried about her, you don't have to worry, nothing will change in the world I created, there will be no more loss, it's okay, she wasn't swayed by a mere fake, with that determination, Sylvia began to solve Deculian's homework, it was contradictory he was able to teach her when he was just a fake, but anyway? Don't be swayed by fakes, that's rather funny, Sylvia forced a smile, he said he felt sorry for me, Patting the panda's head, she murmured, but I feel sorry for you, asterisk 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 I returned to the guild room with Arlo's scarecrow, the scarecrow was a well-made battle puppet even under the eye of vision, so there was no need to worry about an attack, professor, the scarecrow moved its mouth abruptly, I've been thinking, pieces of straw flew out with her voice, are you attacking Sylvia like this? With your death, I shook my head, it could be an attack, it could be a teaching. A loss that Sylvia could not bear, the deep regret left behind, that was also why I made a point of finding her in the name of private tutoring. The experience of loss was, after all, an experience, whether she let go of regret because of that experience or grew mature enough to endure loss, either way, was a good outcome for me. Arlos, what, why are you here? I told you, you didn't say the exact reason, you hit it, the scarecrow continued quietly, ahem, as Arlos cleared her throat, lumps of straw splattered from its mouth. Have you come to cooperate with the altar? You haven't been in touch for quite some time before the voices island had appeared, Arlos went silent, again, Arlos was originally set as a villain, she cooperated with the altar and eventually played a role in the advent of their god. That was why I was suspicious of the fact that she hadn't been contacting me and that I found her in the voice out of nowhere. Have you betrayed me? There is no such thing as a betrayal. Did you not think that it was just a simple cooperative relationship? While well, walking like that, I arrived at the guild room. Room? For me, that is betrayal. Creek when I opened the door to the guild room, I found Arlos's main body. She was still sitting with her mask on today. It was a response to the situation. Arlos looked at me. I know I was paid for giving you information about the altar. However, I decided that the cost of the altar was even greater. The basis? I sat and stared at Arlos. An unfamiliar hostility crept into my eyes. I naturally judged that. She let out a small sigh. She looked into the air as if recalling a far-off memory. Just before I came here. I had a glimpse of the manifestation consciousness of God, I frowned, Arlo shook her head, I knew at that moment, I can only live by sticking with them, it was a landscape that could not be described by mystery and magic, it was neither majestic nor holy, it was just overwhelming, I definitely felt God, sand flowed down from the ceiling of the guild room, Arlo's fiddled with her mask and bent, down as if praying, I tried to use the altar, cooperating with the madness of resurrecting the god and trying to make money? I think the only constant value in this world is money, but the moment I saw it, it made me wonder if that was god, so you judged wrong, I interrupted her, Arlos lifted her head to look at me, her frustration, plain, that's because you didn't see, dash, he is not a god, he's a madman, was this the only reason she was set as a villain? I thought Arlos was being pathetic. No, it was funny how she was overwhelmed by a mere maniac, I shook my head, staring at that mask, anyway, looking at you like this, I don't think you should show this to the original me. The moment you catch my eyes, you will be stuffed, 
if you had seen him with your own eyes, dash I know, I also know the true name of the man the altar calls a god, and I know who that damn madman is, what? Through the mask, Arlo's eyes went large, even though I wasn't real, the script progress and quest structure from Kim Woojin's memory was certain, he is a fake, not a god, he wouldn't depend on believers if he were truly a god, would a god ask a puppeteer to save his body? Not a god, but an asshole. Arlos closed her mouth, Arlos, I do not forgive betrayal, however, since the current me is more generous, I will give you a chance, chance? Will you believe in me, or will you believe in God? Decide before the original me arrives, what decision? You have Garek? Don't you? If you release him when I come, I will die, if you do not release him, I will live, Arlos frowned. I grew frustrated looking at the parts of her face I could see, so I took off her mask before continuing, I'm going to entrust my life to you, and this is how I believe in people, if I believed someone, it was sure enough to entrust my life, if I didn't, you would be my enemy for life, there was no need for an uncertain relationship, you, when Arlo's, was about to say something creaked dash, suddenly, the door to the guild room opened, phew, what a good meal. It was the chuckling Zukokan, grease was thick on his lips as if he had eaten meat somewhere. He looked at the two of us and, startled, stepped back. What are you doing? Were you guys sharing your love for each other? Why are you so close? We backed down, damn, I should have come back a little late, no, I should have taken a peek, what a shame. Kuhuhu, Zukokan came in chuckling and asked, or can I join you dash shut up? is your mouth a garbage dump? To keep spitting out filthy words, Zukokan's face hardened, his eyes and mouth widened with shock, hey, gosh, wow, I, wow, that's too much, I've been working hard outside all day, and that's how you treat me. I ignored him as he crouched down and covered his face, asterisk 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 another day, another day, and another day, as time went by on the island. Sylvia's tutoring continued at the same time every day, the more she learned, the more my body broke down, my imminent death now became vivid and took its place in my heart, this was also not satisfactory as it was natural, but it was acceptable to some extent, although my disappearance might be terrifying, I didn't beg for life shamelessly, good job. Today's dictation score isn't bad either, Sylvia's room, fortunately, today's lesson was completed. Sylvia watched me blankly, my time was running out like this, and the signs of collapse were clear enough for her to see, is today the last lesson? She asked me, this was something worth being curious about, I shook my head, the lessons will continue, from the next me, the next me, and the next me, the lessons would not end, then, you know, can I ask you one thing? Sylvia asked as she looked at me carefully, since the lesson was already over, she used no honorifics, ask, anything, what kind of person was Yuli? That question was new, like a knife in the lungs? I looked at Sylvia and smiled, the name, Yuli, was strange, it was mysterious that besides me, someone knew her name, I'm curious, there's nothing to be curious about, Yuli was just Yuli, I closed my eyes for a moment, I tried to recall her face, but her memory was blurred, was it because that function was gradually failing? There is no other explanation. Then, Sylvia's expression hardened. She exhaled a faint breath. You, do you know? What? The voice embodied Julie, but it failed? The embodied Julie was just a shell. It was impossible to embody her soul. Do you know why? Then, my brow narrowed. The reason it was impossible, that was, because souls are unique, the uniqueness of the soul, the principle is that there could be only one soul of one person in this world, the voice was not free from this law either, the voice was able to bring the dead back to life because the soul of the dead was not in this world, but wandering the afterlife, in this world, Yuli's soul is still out there? It's alive, Sylvia, going silent, clenched her teeth, didn't Yuli die back then? There was compassion in Sylvia's eyes as she regarded me. It mirrored the way I looked at her. Did Yuli run away because she hated you? 
Did she choose the worst way to be free from you? Is she still alive somewhere after running away? She could be if it were the setting that Yuli planted, I think so, that you were betrayed by Yuli, so, I also pity you? No? Sylvia stopped speaking and lowered her head, there was no hesitation in her voice, but sorrow spread across her face, both of her eyes turned dark, I'm sorry, but the next, you will forget, unlike me. I looked at Sylvia and nodded, suddenly, I understood too, if Yuli were disappointed and left me, it would be worth writing down such a setting, no matter how much she thought about it. The only way to escape from Dekulian's mad love was to pretend to be dead, isn't it so? Sylvia watched me, there was a consideration in that silence and regret, I see, I laughed and shook my head, Sylvia didn't take her eyes off my face like a dog protecting its owner but it's fine, I can endure it, Sylvia's expression grew stiff, she straightened up and lowered her eyes, but, Sylvia, my body began to smudge, before I die, I want to tell you something that no one has told you yet, I put a hand on her shoulder, it was an ugly hand, with wrinkled and falling apart skin, a portrait before the collapse, Sylvia, she was still speechless but raised her eyes to look at me, it's not your fault, it's not your fault that you turned out like this, it's not your fault that you swallowed the voice, that you've become so unhappy, Glythian and Iliad, Dekulian and Yuckline, that the only thing that conflict between those two mages accomplished was sacrificing the child named. Sylvia, I didn't have enough time right now to tell her all that, but she was a smart kid, so she should understand, Sylvia let out a gasp. gasp. Her shoulders trembled softly, she stretched out her hand to touch my cheek, at that moment, my eyes were blinded, and I couldn't see her face, but her warm breath tickled my nose, you'll forget this too, anyway, her voice quietly dispersed in a dark world, I could feel her hands pulling me into a gentle embrace, the feeling as she moved closer and caressed my lips, a soft kiss, I like you, a voice trembling with tears and a confession of the purest feeling, in a world far away, a pure white light was sprouting from that darkness, my last memories? The Villain Wants to Live Chapter 247, Loss, 2, Deculian was gone, but he left many traces, the fairy vocabulary, magic theory, the math homework notebook, and the memories in Sylvia's mind, each was unforgettable, there were no actual traces of him left, whether it was the hem of his robe, his hair, or the seams, it was as if he had been burned whole, no, fire at least left ashes, he melted like paint washed away by the sea, Sylvia left alone, placed a finger to her lips, tap, tap, she tapped her mouth as the scene replayed, stupid, her regrets were deep, However, that was the only trace left, it wasn't bad, considering he left at least one, TikTok Sylvia stood, she went to the window and opened it, Deculian is dead, under the lighthouse, she spoke to the scarecrow hiding in the middle of the forest, then, the scarecrow looked up, turned, and went somewhere, Sylvia closed the window, then, she leaned her body against the wall and slid down to the floor, she tried to stand up again, but there was no strength in her body, Sylvia felt dizzy as if she had run dry of mana, her head was sore, her eyelids were heavy, she felt sleepy. Sylvia quietly closed her eyes, in that darkness, Dekulian rose, he accepted the betrayal of the woman he loved the most, saying he was okay, he said he could handle it and didn't run away, and he died like that, Sylvia touched her lips again the feeling had already evaporated, and trails of water ran down her cheeks, that naughty bastard went beyond her knowledge and made her cry, Idnik, she called out to Idnik quietly, now, Sylvia had work to do, with the fake dead, it was time, to recreate him, no? Creek Idnik opened the door and entered with a frown, bastard, why didn't you tell me? You can't eavesdrop on someone else's wounds, you're the one to talk after developing magic for spying on Dekulian, I have the right to do so, he's the one who killed my mother, Sylvia turned, holding her hand out to Idnik, give it, crystal ball, are you planning on making him again right away? 
No, she shook her head. I'm going to break it, Sylvia was thinking. Perhaps, Deculian was right? A fake death was also death, this parting was also real, so, are you going to break the contract? At Idnik's words, Sylvia frowned, Idnik handed her the crystal ball, however, the professor is the only one who can complete who you are now, he is also the only one who can break me, what's the difference? Sylvia's face hardened, Idnik smiled softly, Sylvia, what you will complete is the walls that trap you. And what you'll break is also the walls that trap you, whether you complete it or destroy it, in the end, you will be you, you are the one you choose, either she became Sylvia trapped in the cage of the three primary colors, or Sylvia left her prison, the consequences were ultimately hers to choose, asterisk asterisk asterisk, is it? At the guild room, after Zukokin heard what Arlos had to report, he groaned and nodded, I guess the professor's lifespan is about two weeks, right? Arlos went silent. She sat quietly in the chair, on the desk, she looked over the things that Deculian had left behind, a bunch of magic theories, Sylvia's tutor employment contract, and a boring drawing, oh ho ho, why are you feeling lonely? Zukokin, watching Arlos act like that, asked sarcastically, Arlos didn't pay him any attention. Did you finish your job? I dug the frame, the biggest circle in the magic circle. But, you know, if Deculian is dead, Arlo squinted at him, what about Deculian's pay? After all, he was a guy who only coveted coin, Zukokin shrugged, and Arlos felt exhausted, you're such a f asterisk king bastard, too, I mean, if we have it, we can decorate this guild room better. So this could be beneficial to the next Deculian as well, in this dirty place, oh, of course, he'll say that even a garbage dump is beautiful with you there, but it's better to decorate it anyway, right? Don't you know about the prices going up? Three coins for one board? So? Arlos picked up the coins, these coins were complete currency, she didn't know where it came from, but it wasn't from the voice. It wasn't Sylvia's, therefore, the voice borrowed this complete currency, given that fact, everything bought with these coins was genuine, anyway, we were left these, Arlos pocketed the coin, I mean, it was for you, not us, she looked back at Zakakan, he bought a log with five coins, is there anyone other than you that the professor treated like a person? Well, of course, Garek and I don't treat each other as humans either. Seeing him trying to make a desk out of wood, Arlos asked, Zukokin, UF asterisk cur, why are you cursing, crazy bitch? Who do you trust? Who? Between the altar and the professor, Zukokin's brow furrowed, then, he bought a toolbox with the coins, he consumed hundreds of them, Arlos was terrified, UF asterisk king bastard, you spent a month's dash I believe in myself? And, why trust someone else? Do you have a reason to raid a maniac on promises? In the eyes of criminals like us, the altar and the professor are the same, well, of course, the handsome Deculian is better, ha. Huh? Arlo sighed and buried herself in her chair. Suddenly, the drawings that Deculian had left caught her eye, but again, the professor is addictive. I miss him, I didn't know when I bumped into him in the dark streets. Is it because he has changed a lot since then? At the time, he was a real son of a bitch, Arlos, no, Cynthia, it was a picture of herself, the artist's signature was laid underneath it, to Arlos, seek your faith, Sophern 515, he's quoting a gospel verse, he doesn't even believe in religion, by the way, Zukokin, however, this sentence provoked contemplation from Arlos. If she betrayed Deculian and returned to the altar with his head, or, according to the will of Deculian, if she risied a force against the altar, what would be the outcome of those two choices? What do you plan to do when the god of the altar descends? First, I'll need to know whether god is real or fake, if it's real? I have to make excuses, saying what? I didn't know you were a real god. If I had known you were a real god, I would have believed you too a real god would be willing to forgive since they're the real thing? Thing? What bullshit, 
Arlos muttered to herself and took the drawing. It was the first portrait she had ever received, so she didn't want to throw it away out of pride. After that, they didn't say anything to each other. Zukakan was cutting wood with a saw. Whoosh! Sand fell from the ceiling in time with his rhythm. In the middle of that peaceful place, Arlo sat quietly. There was nothing more to do here. It was her job to pass on the memories of the previous Dekulian to the next one. Drop. Zukakan finally finished sawing. Arlos glanced at him, pondered for about five minutes, and then stood? Stood? Watching her stride towards him, Zukakan asked, What now? Let me do it too. I'm bored, whatever. In fact, rather than boredom, she lacked tension. When Dekulian was there, it was as if she was being dragged around with every action she took. Snip, snip, thwak, thwak, they both worked, waiting for someone to come back. Asterisk, 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 boom, dash. Boom, dash. The next day, Arlos woke to a thumping sound. She wiped the drool off the corner of her mouth. Hey. Bastards. It's Dekulian. It was Idmik's voice. Arlos, startled, quickly put on her mask. She kicked the still sleeping Zukakan. Ouch. What's wrong with this bitch? Open the door. Dekulian is here, already? That was fast, hum, Zukakan trudged over to the door, creak looking beyond the slowly opening door, Arlo swallowed, Dekulian's face appeared through the gap, blue eyes without flaw, holding only confidence in himself and an unflinching arrogance, she bit her lip, Dekulian, that's Zukakan, you know, right? I know, he nodded. Zukakan grinned and waved, hello. This one is Arlo's, Idnik pointed to Arlo's, Dekulian frowned, you're wearing a mask, yeah, Dekulian approached one step at a time, Arlo's handed him a block of papers holding his hundreds of pages of magic formulas and Sylvia's tutoring contract, take this, it's the stuff, that the previous you left, I thought it would be too much to call them keepsakes, taking it, Dekulian lost himself in thought for a moment, but then his lips twisted into a Smirk, it's not a keepsake? The me I was before, the me I am now, are all still me, you seem different, but, Dekulian's expression turned to one of contempt and pity after looking around, you've been living in such a garbage place? It's too filthy to even breathe properly, Zukakan smiled, Idnik wore a similar smirk, the previous you lived here just fine, he even slept here, he didn't sleep lying down, though? You're full of bullshit, Zukakan, are you a moron? Zukakan smiled and looked back at Arlos. He meant to take off her mask, but Arlos shook her head. Idnik spoke, anyway, just read that magic theory. That's your only hope of escaping from here. Home tutoring starts tomorrow, every 3 p.m., so don't forget. Deculian didn't answer. The sixth professor? The sixth Deculian? He already had his eyes on the magic theory. Then, I'll be going, Idnik left first, slam, as soon as the door closed, sand fell from the roof, and, an endless silence consumed them, one minute became ten, and ten minutes became one hour, one hour became three, snore. Snore, Zukakan fell back asleep, Dekulian, who was reading the theory amidst his snoring, suddenly raised his head, he looked straight at Arlos, I wonder, her heart sank, Arlos tilted her head? What do you mean? The previous me wrote a message in the corner of this paper. Message? Yes, there was disbelief and suspicion in Deculian's voice, when inspiration doesn't come easily. Arlos, it says to look at your face, what? Arlos felt disconcerted, but before she could even open her mouth, Deculian continued, and it says to trust you, he left it like a will. For a moment, Arlos's face stiffened, she clenched her teeth while Dekulian stared at her, ha, huh. after that, Arlos took a deep breath and took off her mask, Dekulian's reaction to seeing that face was simple, he just nodded, asterisk 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 the very next day, the sixth Dekulian visited Sylvia's house, Sylvia looked up at him silently as he held out the contract, nice to see you, I'm your tutor, Dekulian, that line was kind of funny, was it Deculian's humor? 
She guessed not. Yeah, come in, Sylvia spoke, but she felt as if she were choking for some reason. Okay, it was strange. He didn't remember that she touched his lips and that Yuli had betrayed him, but right now, it didn't matter. Have you been studying hard? Dekulian spoke as if he was the same person as the previous Dekulian. Sylvia was a little confused. Were the fifth and sixth Dekulians the same person or different people? It was hard to distinguish, but it didn't matter right now. Yeah, I worked hard. It's only been two days, Sylvia responded, and I guess you don't know. But if I studied hard enough, with one step, Sylvia jumped up into Deculian's arms. She opened her arms wide and hugged him, burying her face in his chest. You said you would hug me. You said it was a reward. Deculian didn't say anything. He remained still. Maybe he was stunned, or maybe he thought what she was saying was true, whatever it was. Sylvia continued. I know it sounds ridiculous. Her voice trembled. But what could he do? He didn't even know if it was a lie, and this memory would soon be forgotten anyway, but it's true, reflecting, Sylvia closed her eyes for a moment as she held him. The Villain Wants to Live Chapter 248, Loss, 3, A Windy Island, with waves lapping up the beach, the salty sea breeze wound through the trees, and seagulls chirped overhead, the island of waves spread infinitely as each day passed and the dead and the living forgot themselves in the voice, there I was walking with Sylvia, the island is expanding day by day, how did you know? Today was a walk instead of a lesson, no, she asked for it, saying this was her reward, but it won't be a problem, it will be, if the island continues to spread like this, it might engulf the continent. There were four big problems with the voice, the first was the resurrection of the dead, and the second was the oblivion of memory, the third was the independent concept of time, and the fourth was the nature of the wave. The biggest problem was, after all, the property of the wave. This demon wanted to infringe on the entire continent with his island, even after being swallowed by Sylvia. That instinct was still there. I can fix it. No, dash I mean it. She acted cute, pushing my shoulder. And puffing out her cheeks, I flicked her forehead. It's a part of the contract, Sylvia shuddered and offered me the contract, as she said, the contract had a clause, home tutoring contract about tutoring, tutor de Killian, here and after referred to as A, and student Sylvia, here and after referred to as B, enter into a teaching contract with each other as follows, Article 1, Basic Information on Tutoring, According to B's Special 3 Primary Colors Curriculum, A. Uh, Article 9, Special Terms and Conditions, it B has completely understood the objectively difficult theory, B will be given the free time B wants, home tutoring is at 3 p.m. every day, but in case of a natural disaster or emergency, it can be cancelled without notification, only during the teaching time, B must use respectful language for A. I glanced over the special terms and conditions, Sylvia and I called her name, Sylvia answered with her hands behind her back, yes, the place where I collapsed before is filled with mana, it is filled with mana, was she asking or agreeing, right, I could see the traces of my former self, I see I died at your desk, traces of my past seen with vision, his body disappeared, but the mana of his existence remained, this would also be an act of Deculian's unique mental power, what do you think I thought when I saw you? I knew Sylvia's body still held a demon, she couldn't beat the voice, however, she had unknowingly assimilated with it, however, despite that, the method of destroying the voice was even simpler, to kill Sylvia with the island, I don't know, the previous me must have certainly thought so, the current me was thinking the same, unless someone died, no, as long as I didn't kill, there were no possibilities on this island. Let's sit over there, my leg hurts, Sylvia pointed to a bench. By the roadside, she grabbed my sleeve and dragged me over, and we sat down together. Ten days have already passed since you arrived, I met Sylvia's gaze, her clear golden eyes were soaked in sorrow and determination, is the parting soon? Mumbling, Sylvia sneakily buried her head in my shoulder, as if leaning on me, 
holding on to the hem of my sleeve, it could be, I didn't push her away, I think I will win the bet, however, I thought quietly, I sorted out the thoughts in my head, no, there was no need for that, from the moment I came here, my magic theory was set out to achieve that purpose in the first place, I had already made up my mind to do it, so I just followed? Followed? You know, then, Sylvia looked up at me, you tried to teach me loss, I know that too, her blonde hair fluttered under the approaching wind, her eyes twinkled like the stars, how could such a beautiful child be so pitiful, by the way, it's strange, she raised her finger and touched my lips, a smile appeared on that icy expressionless face, even if the current you were to die, a voice that trembled, and dies again, such sad words were directed only to me, and again even if you die, again and again, even if you keep dying, it seems that only my love for you will grow? A confession as pure as her tears, so, it's like I've already won the bet, is it? I looked at her and nodded, yeah, she buried her face in my chest, she wrapped her arms around my waist and exhaled a warm breath, it could be, this much was enough, it was enough to move on to the end and to strengthen that belief, I love you, I love you, from now on, I would just have to bear as much as I could, asterisk 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 the sixth Deculean was dead, like last time, it happened naturally? Sylvia accepted this time with difficulty again, however, the seventh Deculean that followed immediately was very strange, even to Sylvia and Idnick, spontaneous? Yeah. Sylvia shouted energetically, it was very rare, perhaps the first time in her life, Idnick scratched her temple, that is. I mean, you're saying that Deculean occurred naturally? On this island? Yes. Deculian wants to live here too, Idnick, Deculian's mental power remains on this island, so he's borrowing my powers to raise himself? To live with me, I think he likes me, isn't that just a guess? Sylvia narrowed her eyes, Idnick cleared her throat and turned away, anyway, she saw Deculian walking out of the sea, I will go first, you guide him well, from last time on. It was Idnick's job to guide Deculian around the island, the so-called playing is hard to get, she said she was shy to meet him at the start, okay, yeah, Sylvia walked away, and Idnick waved as she approached Deculian, hey, Deculian. Seventh Deculian. Welcome. Seventh Deculian approached Idnick, he looked at her with a furrowed brow, the memory reset was also cumbersome. I visited the guild room with Idnick, Zukakan, and Arlos welcomed me as if I was the seventh Deculian, you're here again, oh, so are we starting over? Ignoring Zukakan's words, Arlos first gave me the magic theory, it was a big box, take it, your magic theory, it's a few thousand pages or so, Arlos's appearance impressed me, but anyway, the desk and chair are over there, Arlos pointed to a decently made desk and a chair? Zukakan chuckled and spoke, then Idnik and I will go to work, so you work hard too, cooperating, especially Arlos, since your face does the cooperation, you son of a bitch. I opened the box containing the thousands of pages of the theory that I had written before, clean and tidy without a grain of dust, as expected of his obsessive cleaning, you indeed wrote a lot, a lot, Arlos muttered in admiration. I opened from the very first page and read the fragments of the magic. Circle? From that moment on, time passed rapidly, crumble, crumble Arlos picked up some snacks, did some stretching, and I spent roughly half a day working from the first page to page three, three hundred, in this way, I clearly understood my magic theory and its meaning, it was a little dark, a little cold-hearted, and born from an iron will, professor. As I leaned over, Arlos called me as if waiting, what, are there any notes about me? It was there before, the artistic face of Arlos, a beauty that calmed me at a glance, I nodded. It does, what is it now? In the corner of the magic theory lay magical handwriting that only I could write, and only I could recognize, I read that sentence to her, Arlos, what, it says I need your faith and help. Arlos's jewel-like eyes went wide, I didn't say more than that, asterisk 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 three days later, 
the guild room, de Killian was now out to teach, Arlos, Zukakan, and Idnik were lying on the couch and drinking after a long time. With Sylvia working with de Killian, the situation on the Boyce's island had also become more relaxed, this couch is well made, Zukakan laughed at Idnik's compliment, Kuhu, of course, who made it, right? Oh, if I could only buy mana stones, I would make something even better, ha ha ha. Idnik was grinning as well, but suddenly frowned, wait, can't you buy mana stones? Yeah? The price is unbelievable, even if I use all the coins over there, I'll probably get one very small mana stone, it was a lot more expensive than I thought, the coins that de Killian had earned were piled up like a mountain, Idnik's expression on seeing it hardened. If we don't have mana stones, mana stones, what, are you dumb? Just say it, Idnik, Idnik stood up and approached the box containing Dekulian's magic theory, hey. What are you doing? If you touch it, we're all dead, the drunken Zukakan staggered after her. Idnik ignored him, no, she didn't even hear him, Russell she took Dekulian's magic theory, she read carefully from the first page. As a mathematician trained by Rohakan, she grasped and interpreted even the most difficult theories with relative ease. While reading the theory, Idnik admired de Killian's ingenious and artistic ideas, but at some point, fell into doubt. It was a very simple yet fatal doubt. Would it be possible to implement such huge magic without a mana stone? Even if they looted all the coins on the island, they wouldn't be able to buy a mana stone to power this huge magic. At that moment, Idnik's head shot up, but it wasn't because of the theory, a certain magic signal flashed through her mind, Arlos called to Idnik, what are you doing? From the dark guild room, since Idnik spent two hours immersing herself in it, the bitterness of their alcohol had long since evaporated, Idnik took turns looking between Zukakan and Arlos, swallowing, Dekillian is dead, what? Zukakan grimaced, and Arlos shook her head, it's only been three days, that's what I mean, there is still a long way to go for natural death. Unless someone killed Dekulian, for a moment, Idnik stopped, unless someone killed Dekulian, someone she had forgotten, Arlos, what about Garek? Oh, Arlos, and Zukakan's expressions grew somber, bang, dash, Idnik opened the door first and ran out, Arlos, with her scarecrow, and Zukakan chased her, so, they arrived at the cage where Garek was imprisoned, and, it was silent, they had nothing to say? He's gone Arlos murmured first, Idnik's devastated laugh followed, Zukakan scratched the back of her neck, yeah, it's not even his working time, if he was going out, he should have gone out peacefully, underground in the middle of the forest, Garek's cage was crumpled, why is this bastard suddenly so grumpy? He was working so well with me. Zukakan must his hair, the common goal of leaving this island first was clear, so suddenly, for what, probably couldn't stand it, in the first place, Garek didn't care if he couldn't leave the island as long as he could kill Dekulian. F asterisk CK, at the scarecrow's words, Zukakan tapped his forehead, we're all messed up, Idnik, do you know where Dekulian's body is, the scarecrow asked Idnik, Zukakan provoked her, would there be a body left? He's paint, his mana remains, uf asterisk cur, we'll have to keep a record of that so we can track Garek's location, so you're just going to just watch Dekulian dying? You moron, indeed, but why are you cursing, bitch? Anyway? Idnik, Zukakan quickly understood and looked to Idnik, can you tell? No, you can, right? If you don't know, we're ruined, Idnik had Dekulian's crystal ball, that crystal ball was Dekulian's catalyst, so she would probably know where he died, Idnik nodded silently, Zukakan and the scarecrow breathed a sigh of relief, then let's go, to find Garek, wait? Idnik called them before they ran off, the scarecrow and Zukakan looked back, what? What, nothing, however, Idnik shook her head, what the, hey, did your brain freeze? Come on and just guide us already, hey. Hey Idnik. Guide us, woman. Right now, at this moment, Idnik was thinking to herself, 
She was engrossed in thoughts about the giant magic conceived by Deculian, to realize that, he would need infinite mana? The extent of magical power was as far away as the sea, impossible even with a hundred wizards, thus, the realization of that magic was impossible, at least not on this island, even with Sylvia's mana, Idnik's mana, Arlo's mana, and Zukakan's mana combined, it would be impossible, however, there was one way, if he killed Sylvia, if the demon in Sylvia's body and Sylvia herself were sacrificed, this magic circle would be driven by the mana that would overflow, it could destroy the entire island, by submerging Idnik and Arlos, Zukakan and Garek, everyone who lived and breathed on the voice, only with that could he kill the demon, ha, huh? indeed, the most demonic way to destroy the demon? The most deculean like thought, hey, you too, come here, but until this assumption was proven true, or even if it was true, Sylvia must not know this, the fact that Deculian was trying to kill her, Sylvia should never know that, I have something to tell you. The Villain Wants to Live Chapter 249, Loss, 4, A Night on the Island, in the Spooky Guild Room, Idnik was discussing with Zukakan and Arlos, right now, the most important thing is to catch Garek first, I don't know what he's thinking. But if he keeps killing Deculian like this, not only will the completion of the magic circle, but Sylvia's mental state, will be a problem. She did not tell her assumption to Zukakan and Arlos, it wasn't clear yet, and above all, Deculian's method was. The best way to protect the continent, Idnik would take that path as a desert wizard? Sacrifice served as a wizard's base, okay, so what about the scarecrow? I have to make another one, the scarecrow that I placed as Deculian's escort has already been broken, it must be Garek's doing, creak at that time, for some reason, the door to the guild room opened, Arlos, Zukakan, and Idnik looked back, feeling a chill, uh, the eighth Deculian stood in the dark, he was looking at them, while everyone was silent, he came over without a word and sat at the desk and chair, then, he casually read his magic theory? Looking at him, Zukakan muttered blankly, even if you reincarnated on your own, who guided you all the way here? No one, but how did you come here? I don't know, Zukakan and Arlos whispered, their eyes trembled back and forth in astonishment, as if all that bothered him, Deculian looked back with a frown, did you see a ghost? Oh, of course, you, were killed by Garek, Garek? Deculian asked, Arlos answered quickly, yeah? Yeah? Deculian, Garek went looking for you, now you are in danger, stay here for a while, but Deculian shook his head, Idnik watched him closely, and Arlos frowned, why? I said Garek is after you, 3 p.m., he held up his hiring contract, signed by Deculian and Sylvia, I have a contract to keep, Idnik clenched her teeth, Arlos sighed, and shook her head? Zukakan said, yeah, well, do whatever you want, after all, even if you die, you will live, asterisk asterisk asterisk, after all, even if you die, you will live, whether it was the damn words of that asshole Zukakan or things would have always turned out this way, Arlo still sometimes thought about it, of course, that may not have caused all of this, but did she need something to complain about, thud dash. Arlos put the clump of paper down on the desk? Ask? It was the tracking paper that marked the points where Deculian had been dying, countless points were marked with an X, based on this, she worked tirelessly to inform him of Garek's location, where Garek resided, and Garek's movement, but she had no answer, she couldn't come up with an answer, phew, as she sighed, a white breath spread like cigarette smoke through the air, here, on the Voices Island, it was winter. Snow fell every night of the year. The scenery of this island was similar to Sylvia's mental state. So, as Idnik said, it could be called a very dangerous state. Garek, where the hell are you? You? Deculian would live even if he died. He didn't even need Sylvia's help. Just at the end of his life, he would appear somewhere on this island thanks to Deculian's unique mental power. As such, his resurrection was certainly infinite. 
If he killed him as soon as he came back to life, it would be insignificant, even if he resurrected infinitely, if Garek killed infinitely, he would be dead in the end. Arlo silently looked at the box containing his magic theory, although it was Deculian's. Magic theory, he hadn't touched it for two years, Arlo's cleaned that dusty box from time to time, feeling it pitiful that it had been abandoned, three years and three months. Three years and three months, that was how much time had passed since Sakakan said he would live even if he died, of these, Sylvia's home tutoring lasted only three months, for the remaining three years, Deculian suffered his death repeatedly, without reaching the guild room or Sylvia's house, he was killed by Garek, he kept pretending to be strong, but just kept dying, Arlos murmured and took the crumpled drawings. It was a sketch that Deculian drew a long time ago, ahem, it wasn't. Like she didn't like it at all, but the professor's disgusting compliments came to mind from time to time, mysterious, beautiful, artistic. Creak then someone opened the door, Arlos quickly hid the drawing, hey, Arlos, it was the Kokken, he didn't bother wiping away the snow that had piled up all over his body, Idnik is calling you to come, she has something to say, where? Arlos was reluctant to leave, it was because Garek smashed her scarecrow three years ago, now that she didn't have enough coins to even buy food, she didn't have the materials to make another one, to Sylvia, she called you to come to the central lighthouse? Arlos frowned, Zukakan wore a similar expression but shrugged, she said that she has something to tell us, asterisk asterisk asterisk, it was a fairy tale, one hazy day long ago, Sylvia showed Deculian the fairy tale she wrote herself, a fairy tale made for Deculian that she wrote in the language she learned from him, fairy tale? He asked briefly, yes, a story written with correct grammar, Deculian nodded quietly and glanced over the script as if savoring it, what do you think? Sylvia hastily asked for a review, then, Deculian smiled very faintly, I haven't read it yet, oh, okay, Sylvia waited, wiggling her fingers, she expected his response, tension rose every minute and second as she was focused on his lips, then, finally, it's well written, Deculian's praise, a bulging smile filled her face, and, oh, Sylvia opened her eyes, today, she also dreamed of the past, it was a memory she missed, a heartbreaking scene? She slowly stood, her long hair cascaded down about her waist, suddenly, she looked at the calendar, eight years in the voice after her first meeting with Deculian, no, too many years had passed without Deculian, knock, knock Sylvia turned around as the door opened, Sylvia, calling her name in a low voice, it was Idnik, Sylvia clenched her teeth, her eyes turning sharp, Idnik, why did you come? Sierra called, she's worried about you, as well? The island, it's been winter for a whole year, Sylvia, Sylvia didn't say anything, she didn't even meet Idnik's eyes, however, she asked for the gist, did you find Garek? Sylvia knew that Garek was killing Deculian. There were times when she chased after him with the wind, and there were times when she was accompanied by the ghost. However, Garek's keen senses far surpassed Sylvia's wind. Idnik shook her head. We couldn't find him. Then why did you come? Sylvia resented Idnik. She resented her for not stopping Garek in advance. She resented the voice. Sylvia, Idnik's voice subsided. Sylvia shook her head as if she didn't want to hear it. Get out about Deculian, get out, he's not someone you should miss that much, I said get out. To Sylvia, who struggled not wanting to listen to her, Idnik showed her a piece of paper with magic on it, she grabbed Sylvia's hands, which were pushing her away, look, this is the magic circle that Deculian formed on this island. After watching Sylvia crumble and suffer for three years, Idnik learned how Deculian was trying to kill Sylvia. It was a method that, as a wizard, she could understand, but as a human, she could never tolerate. You said you made a bet with him, right? The one who completes the magic first will step away without any regrets. At this rate, Sylvia would die. She was exhausted every night, withering and withering. Sylvia would surely die. You see for yourself, this magic circle, 
De Killian offered Sylvia the feeling of love, above all, that feeling was sure to kill Sylvia, De Killian intended to kill you from the beginning, and the mana that would overflow from her corpse would activate the magic circle? This is the magic circle of De Killian that I studied, open your eyes and see. This theory took three years for even Idnik to fully understand. Sylvia looked over it, shaking her head blankly. This magic circle will be activated when you die, and the entire island will be submerged. De Killian intends to bring everything together in the voice and eliminate it. It doesn't matter who they are or who lives here. No, no. Look closely, rather. Garek is blocking him. Garek's village had been destroyed by the Yuck Line. That history. Garek did not want to repeat, that was why he killed Deculian countless times, even if Sylvia died, to not complete the magic circle? Sylvia's face went dull, however, her eyes continued to scan Deculian's magic circle, her tightly closed lips trembled, Idnik loosened her tight grip around Sylvia's wrist, Deculian is a yuck line, yuck line never compromises with demons, Sylvia was a smart kid. So, she would know exactly what the purpose of this magic circle was and what the requirements were. Hey, Idnik. Then, another voice called Idnik. Two people were looking at them from outside Sylvia's door, Arlos and Zukakan. Is that true? The two asked with expressionless faces. Idnik looked into their eyes and nodded, it is true. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Three months later, stomp. Stomp the sound of footsteps resounded outside the guild room, Arlos, sitting at the desk studying, glanced at the door, are you here, Zukakan? Yeah, it was Zukakan, after looking for Garek today, he rushed to the fireplace as soon as he hung his coat on the hanger, Garek, I couldn't find him, naturally, everywhere is covered by snow. So, are you still holding on to that theory? Yeah. Arlos lifted the glasses placed on the bridge of her nose. I'm trying to find out if Idnik's words are true. Deculian's magic theory. Arlos was studying it hard, of course. It would take quite a long time for Alos, whose theoretical ability was inferior to Idnik's, but it was better than nothing. What will you do studying that? You are just a puppeteer. I am not a shithead like you. I'm not just a puppeteer. I'm the best in the industry. Zukakan snorted and leaned back, but, Arlos? Even if it's true, isn't that the right way? It's better than the voice spreading to the continent and destroying it whole. Arlos looked at Zukakan with surprise. What was wrong with this one? Are you Zukakan? I am, but you say that? What the, I told you before, I believe in myself. Zukakan took out the sweet potato that had been left in the fireplace? Arlos licked her lips, she had put it in to eat, but that bastard, it's better to die as heroes who saved the continent than to live here and forget about ourselves, the professor will do that for us, think about dying later, rather, where were the professor's traces today? Arlos unfolded the map and handed him a pen, Zukakan pointed with his finger, here, hmm, today, in a strange place too. At that moment, unexpectedly, like a spark, like a match being scratched, an idea burned in Arlos's mind. Russell, Russell, the sound of snow accumulating on the ceiling of the guild room, whoosh, a cold draft seeped through the cracks in the wall, Arlos closed her mouth while Zukakan continued to eat, do you want some? Zukakan put the sweet potato up to Arlos's mouth, and she unconsciously bit into it while lost in her mind, it's different, finally, Arlos spoke. She put the map on top of Deculian's magic circle. To be precise, she overlaid the tracing paper that marked the points where Deculian died. It's different. Then, she compared the two locations. Here, Idnik missed. Idnik had missed something. I mean, what do you know just by studying this? Ignoring Zukakan's interruptions, Arlos concentrated, with a more serious attitude than when making puppets. She considered the relationship between this magic circle and Achillean's deaths, she used her brain until it felt like her skull might explode, and like that, Zukakan, I think I know, pfft, bullshit, even though Zukakan laughed in disdain while eating the sweet potatoes, he cleared his throat after meeting Arlo's serious eyes, ahem, what, 
What do you think you know? Arlos, she seemed to know? No, she was sure. Next, the place where Deculian will die, and now, where Deculian is, Arlos, answering that way, gathered the map and the magic circle together and stood, bang dash, she opened the door and ran out. The villain wants to live Chapter 250, Sacrifice, 1, Arlos ran through the snow, kicking up frost, what is it? Zukakan asked from behind, he followed after her without knowing what was going on, Arlos replied, I overlapped the target map and the magic circle without much thought, and looking at it, I found the location where Dekulian died a bit suspicious, Dekulian's mana was special, all those who had reached that state was all the same, but Dekulian belonged to a fairly unique axis among them, unique, that is, unique mana, Dekulian's mana was similar to his main body, so it never disappeared and never broke? It remained in a place for a long time, waiting only for its master to arrive, he is drawing a magic circuit with his corpse, so, I think I know where he will be next, Zukakan frowned, with his corpse. Yeah, and Garek is cooperating with him, bullshit, Garek, with Dekulian? Arlos nodded, Dekulian must have been in contact with Garek for quite some time and asked for his cooperation, if not, there was no explanation, he's the first to find Dekulian, who resurrects on his own, he even told him what to do next. Garek must be doing all that, Garek with his super senses, the five senses, such as sight, hearing, and smell, as well as motor, cognitive, and perceptual abilities, none could be compared to humans on the continent, if it were him, it would be possible to deceive Sylvia's eyes, still dash the cockin who was about to say that Madman would never cooperate with Dekulian, suddenly shut his mouth and thought, what if the price that Dekulian offered was the right to kill his countless selves? Zukakan murmured, is it Nick wrong? No, it's different? The magic theory Idnik read is different from the one I read, the magic theory that Idnik read was up to the seventh Dekulian, however, the magic theory left behind to Arlos resulted from one last modification of the eighth Dekulian, appearing out of nowhere just before being killed by Garek. Anyway, follow me, let's see, Dekulian, what that professor is doing. The two ran, trampling over the snow covered ground and past white trees, and, Russell, Russell? A single gust of wind engraved itself in the pure white world, a certain magical current moved as if chasing after them. Asterisk, 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 stomp, stomp in deep darkness, the sound of running, this place where there was no light, the world lay stagnant, and the air didn't flow, so, where Sylvia and the eyes of the voice didn't reach, I was walking down the basement to find the right place, stomp, stomp, I didn't know when this plan was established, I just heard it from Garek the moment I raised myself. And I fully understood and willingly accepted, stomp, Stomp my existence was fake, but I could achieve something with my death, I could reach my most ideal goal? I could kill a demon, that was enough to be satisfied, it was enough to bear, like the previous me did before, stomp, stomp suddenly, another set of steps overlapped the sound of my own, a voice called out to me, Deculian, before long, someone appeared to block the way, looking at her, I was surprised, which wasn't like me. She was an artistic human that made me feel that the space had brightened up in an instant. I'm Arlos. Long time no see. Arlos said so and gave me a small smile. Oddly enough, she seemed happy to see me, but I still didn't know why. It was true. Next to her, the human pointing at me with wide eyes was the cockin. I stared at them silently. Arlos let out a small sigh. Then, she took a step closer and asked. Professor, have you been killing yourself until now? It was a voice full of pity and compassion, but it was a very little question to me. Yes, I nodded, Arlos frowned, even her wrinkles were extremely beautiful. Why? Art asked, I answered briefly, I found a way. One of the great principles of magic was that mana resembled the magician. The uniqueness of my mana was mental power, therefore, it didn't break. 
the power that connected mana was stronger than anything else, what way, the way to save that child, therefore, Sylvia and the power of the voice created the current me, but the more I became myself, the more I realized myself and was able to take control, no one in this world could imitate me. As part of my very own property, I weaved my theory. Arlo shut her mouth, Zukokin scratched the back of his neck, time passed in that soft silence, the wind seeped in, will you be fine? There was some sympathy in her voice, I found it, thanks to the order of the magic circuit you left behind, however, there are still many circuits left to fill in this magic circle, hundreds of times, no, it could be thousands of times, I don't know what number I was, or how many times I had chosen death. Also, I didn't know how many times I would continue to die, I didn't know, but, whatever it is, I have to choose, Arlo swallowed, she looked at me with her lips pressed shut, her eyes grew wet, even if I die a thousand times if I can save just one person, I looked into my heart, the destruction of the voice and the death of my existence, more than that, compassion for Sylvia, those were Kim Woojin's feelings, that's the only way, this was my conclusion? No matter what happened, at least I couldn't let Sylvia die, at that moment why, a voice approached coldly, like a dagger driven through my skin, Arlo's, and Zukokin turned around in surprise, and a child appeared through the darkness of the basement, no, it was a woman who had matured before I knew it, why, Sylvia, asterisk 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 in the dark and long passage that served as part of the magic circle, in it, Sylvia stared at Deculian, Deculian met her eyes, why? But Sylvia didn't understand, she had a hard time accepting it, why, 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 couldn't he just stay here with her? Why was he so willing to break the voice, even sacrificing himself, we can live here together, Deculian said nothing, she was frustrated by that, Sylvia ran to Deculian and grabbed him by the collar, we can, Sylvia, Deculian called her name, he looked down at her, muttering quietly as he groped for the past. I remember you when you were young, memories from Dekulian, not Kim Woo Jean, it was too blurry and faded, but even in Dekulian's distant memories, there was the child named Sylvia, the child who was holding Sierra's hand, the child who hid behind Sierra's back as if she was afraid and avoided my eyes, that little kid got so big and is now looking at me, at that moment. Sylvia stopped breathing. She realized a bit late the current Deculian didn't share the same time as her, as the years of the voice flowed endlessly. He repeated only his death. Maybe back then, I was a little jealous of you, looking at young Sylvia, the feelings that the original Deculian felt. The moment he found out that the girl was similar to him, and the size of her talent was so great that it was impossible to even compare the frustration and jealousy he felt, and now, I might be regretting it, Sylvia looked up at Deculian silently, Sylvia, not all of my choices are right, he looked down at her and placed a hand on her shoulder, it was warm, even if you end up hating me for killing Sierra, I should have let you hate me by my side, at that time, I should have, taken, you as my disciple, one day, Sylvia wanted to become Deculian's apprentice, just like the present Ephraim, I had a lot to teach you, I would have helped you not run away, however, Deculian refused, it wasn't just for Sylvia, but because of Deculian's personality flaws, the jealousy and envy that swelled at the bottom of his heart rejected Sylvia to some extent, it is the same for the past, Deculian continued, I should have rejected Glithian's request to kill Sierra, at that moment, Sylvia trembled, she rested her face on Deculian's arm. Glithian's instigation to kill Sierra, directly cut off her short life and ignited Sylvia's ambition, it was vaguely expected, but still sorrowful, but, Sylvia? Regret is a useless emotion, no matter what I regret now, my choices do not change, and living in regret is like dying, like you now, let me give you one last piece of advice, Sylvia, don't run away, whatever happens, Sylvia nodded. And then, she took a step away from Deculian, through the empty cavern where the wind wandered in vain, she put her hands to her chest. As Sylvia looked at him, 
She spoke almost as if in prayer. I love you, Sylvia knew to Killian, I love you so much. It hurts my heart every time I see you. She knew the man who killed Sierra. I wish we could be together for the rest of our lives. She knew him, who tried to be hated by her for her own sake, knowing that's not going to happen. It hurts so much. She knew him, who tried to protect her from Glythian and the intelligence agency, the paradise for me. She knew the man who had died countless times for her. It was you, only now, she knew for sure. But, there is no such thing as a paradise with only happiness, Sylvia smiled faintly, Deculian nodded, I am still beyond the sea, yeah, I know, Sylvia quietly responded, a slight smile appeared on Deculian's lips as if in response, the two looked at each other for a little while, Arlos and Zakakan watched from a distance, they couldn't even dare to intervene, suddenly, Long hair fell from the basement ceiling. Zukakan and Arlos were startled but soon frowned. They pulled that hair tight. Ugh. Garek fell. Zukakan asked with a whisper, Where have you been? I have been underground. Only underground? Yeah. How would you guys find me in this wide place in the first place? You can't see me if I hide. Oh, Zukakan, you passed under my head once, but you still didn't know. F asterisk CKU? More importantly, did you collaborate with Deculian? Garek chuckled, he said, wiping his long hair. It's not cooperation I killed him, but why don't you kill him now? I don't feel like it. Did I kill him 800 times? At the 800 th, I got a bit sick of it, so I asked him how many more times I would have to do it. Arlos listened quietly to Garek, but he said there were a thousand more left. He said there were a few things that needed to be corrected in the magic circle or something. So, well, Garek shrugged. Right now, I'm killing out of a sense of duty, taking turns with my family. I feel a bit bored. Each of his family must have killed him about 30 times. Multipersonal Garek laughed proudly. Then, when the real Dekulian comes, will you kill him? Arlos asked. There was a lot of hostility in that voice. Then, Garek twisted the corners of his mouth into a smile. Oh, of course, the real Deculian doesn't have any memory of his death anyway. He must have felt no pain. That's cheating. I have to kill him properly. Arlos looked beyond him stiffly to Sylvia and Deculian. The two seemed to be working things out to some extent. But if the real Deculian didn't arrive, it would be a mess. The mana that drove this magic circle was Deculian's mental power in the first place but that mental power was something that only its owner could handle, huh? It's Idnik, hey, Arlos, the wrong person is coming over there, then, Zukakan sarcastically pointed behind her, as she said, Idnik, wearing a robe, was approaching, hey, Idniayak? As Zukakan giggled and asked for a high five, Idnik shook her head silently, what? You were wrong, don't you want to admit you're wrong? You said Deculian wanted to kill Sylvia. Idnik bit her lip tightly. Arlo spoke to her. Idnik, go to the guild room to see what I have sorted out. It will be a little different. I know. I came after seeing that. I was only half wrong. Half? Right. Idnik let out a small sigh. According to his theory, Sylvia won't die. He doesn't have to kill her. That's true. Instead of Sylvia's mana. The existence of Deculian possessed the mana of being. It was true that there was no need to kill Sylvia if he used that absurd mental power instead. However, this does not mean that Sylvia's sacrifice is not necessary. And now Deculian, Idnik looked over. Sylvia was looking up at Deculian. Deculian was looking down at Sylvia. Looking at the two of them, Idnik continued to speak. Let's talk more about it later. What's good is good. Just like that saying, I am a desert wizard, then she smiled and stretched, what are you talking about? Yeah, Arlos, it must have been a bit of a psychological shock for me to lose to you. On the other hand, Arlos and Zukakan looked at her with disconcertment. And